let's get serious and continue on why we fight. Why do we fight? Again, like I said, we are wanting to preserve what we had. What we had, and we hate the perversion of what it's become. This one is Doctor Who. And, no, I'm not going to be talking about Chip Nalls or Jody. I'm actually going back to a little bit to the beginning of this new series that we had. Uh, what they call New Who. And maybe even a little bit further back than that into the the novel series called The New Adventures that took started happening after Doctor Who. Technically, it wasn't canceled. It was put on hiatus. It was stopped, but they never put an official kibosh on it. But the series came to an end in 1989 uh, with Sylvester McCoy. And, again, I've made it known. I'm no prude. Not at all. As I quoted Orson Bean, I may be a Christian, but I'm still a dirty old man. And I am. I enjoy the occasional uh, naughty joke and humor in that aspect. I enjoy looking at the pretty ladies. I am a dirty old man. But, again, everything has its place. Everything has its own spot. And one of the quote, one of the big, uh, and we always laughed about it too, by uh, about it, was in Doctor Who. There is no hanky panky in the TARDIS. I don't know if I said TARDIS right, but TARDIS. No hanky panky. Even throughout any of the era of Doctor Who, yes, you had your eye candy with pretty companions through the era. Uh, whether it be, of course, Perfect Gillian Brown, uh, whether it be even Nyssa, even Tegan, those were both very lovely-looking ladies. Uh, of course, how can we forget Leela and her leather skirts running around trying to slay everything? The first Romana, Mary Tam, such an elegant, graceful, beautiful woman. Uh, Joel Grant, I mean, take a look at her. He was very popular. Again, the mini skirts, dressing of the era of uh, when Doctor Who was uh, written. Even Liz Smith, uh, Liz uh, Smith, uh, the first companion that the John Smith, ha uh, that uh, John Smith, but the Doctor John Smith, as he was identify himself in Unit, and of course Sarah Jane Smith, Elizabeth Sladen, which a beautiful lady she was. But the thing is, is they're just beautiful ladies he had in there, but there was no hanky panky. When the new adventures started, it really started irritating me, and I actually started quit writing, uh, reading them because it's like, where are you going with this series? It's not feeling like Doctor Who. They wanted to have a more mature Doctor Who experience. And I'm sorry, new adventure fans out there, but no. <laughs> Doctor Who is family, not more mature. Part of its charm was its innocence as well as his adventures. Yes, you had many aspects where it was too violent, or this and that, and people uh, taking umbrage to it, and rightly so. But there was no hanky-panky. None. Sexuality was out of it. Virtually from the first book, you know, they were trying to make Ace uh, see how often she could get laid and cuss. Starting from the first book on up. This isn't Doctor Who. The new series, right off the bat, with Russell T. Davies. This is one of the reasons why I have no faith in Russell T. Davies coming back to Doctor Who. Mikey saying, hey, let's get a hotel so we can shag talking to Rose. It's like, this has nothing to do with Doctor Who. There is no hanky-panky in the TARDIS. Where am I coming from? What do I know about that? We have huge histories of Doctor Who, even... Doctor Who, this is the 20th anniversary special. No, there's no Star Log on it. Thank goodness. I mean, we even have, there are so many volumes written about Doctor Who and where it came from and what it was about. It's staggering even to the Star Wars, all the information that was written about. Doctor Who's had almost 60 years of it. All the staggering information we have about Star Trek. Doctor Who has all that history. And yes, I know, when it comes to it, they want to try to uh, this or that. 
But it came to such a point that oh, good old Uncle Terry, Uncle Uncle Terry Terrence Dix, uh, made statement that that uh, Susan was not Doctor's granddaughter. And some of the people were saying the reason why is because it meant that the doctor shagged at one time, and they didn't even want to have that image of the doctor that you no. Know, that just like you're trying to think of your own grandparents or your own parents going out there and doing the act to conceive what eventually would become you. Of course, that was a big fight between uh, that you had going back, Ferreti Lambert and Sidney Newman. You know, she is the granddaughter. Uh, Uncle Terry and a few of the others saying, no, it's not, trying to preserve uh, even a higher aspect of uh, saintlyhood, you might say. Of course, I think she was. That I stand by that. But the important thing is there is no sexuality. There is not pushing an agenda or sexual identity. Doctor Who is innocence in those areas. It's all about going out and having this epic space opera on low-budget sets. That's what it needs to be brought to if you really want to redo Doctor Who, if you really want to erase what Chip Nalls did, you have to erase what Moffat did, and you have to erase what Davies did. You have to erase this entire era of Doctor Who. Sit down and watch as many episodes of Doctor Who, even the surviving ones of Lost Stories. Immerse yourself like Harv Bennett did when he got the, his hands on Star Trek and realize what Doctor Who is about. It is innocence. And this is one of the reasons why we fight. Not because we're prudes. Not because we're elitists. Not because we are ists or phobes. It's because we love what we had. We love what has worked. And look at the ratings of Doctor Who now. Folks, it's not working. From the mighty offices of the great Tag Estate. This is Baron Tag talking about why we fight. Thank you. Mm -hmm.